Shalom of Racha from Yerushalayim Mira Kodesh. I'd like to uh, share several ideas con- connected to the weekly section of study. This week we study Parashat Bechukotai, the last section of the third book of Moses, the completing section Sidra of Sefer Vayikra. And the central theme in our parsha deals with the many blessings that will be received if we follow and observe the laws and statutes of God. The opening section of the parasha, Im bechukotai telechu ve'et mitzvotai tishmeru ve'asitem otai. God speaks about the rewards that will be presented if we properly follow the laws of the Torah. And Chalila, the opposite, a very long and difficult list of punishments, which will, God forbid, be carried out if we neglect the commandments and Torah directives. The imlo tishmeuli. And there are different customs about how to read this section. Twice a year we read uh, sections of the Torah with a very, very long list of uh, punishments, corrective behavior. Very, very sad section. Very difficult section to read. It's so difficult that in some communities they read it, they read it in some communities they read it quickly in some communities they read it in a soft voice in some communities it's, it's, they read it with, in a, with, a, with a broken heart because it's a really a long description of uh, that which God forbid could potentially happen if we don't, we don't act properly I would like to focus on one aspect of this uh, section it's, it's a very well-known foundation of Jewish thought and tradition that this world that we live in is not the entirety of the existence of an individual. Anyone who's ever studied any section of Jewish tradition, there is a world beyond this world. In rabbinic writings, for instance, we find that the sources are replete with mention of reward and punishment in what they refer to as the world to come, Olam Haba. And yet, a careful reading of our parasha will clearly indicate that when the Torah speaks of reward and punishment, it speaks of these ideas only vis-a-vis this world. There's no mention of the world beyond this world. Read, read the section, read the section of Bechukotai. I will provide your rain in the proper time. The land will give forth the produce. There'll be peace in the land. You'll be fruitful. You'll multiply. You'll increase. And so too in all the other sources dealing with the blessings. See the other parallel section. We're reading the end of Leviticus. Look in Deuteronomy chapter. Look, look in Deuteronomy chapter twenty-six, and you will see the list of blessings and the list of curses are all blessings and curses in this world. There's no mention of the world to come. There's no mention of God giving us reward in some kind of afterlife. But if that's really the essence of reward. And if that's really the essence of, 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 of punishment, so why is parashat bechukotai, for instance? And why is parashat kitavo, for instance, and all the other references in the Torah? All speaking about you'll be blessed in the field. Baruch atah ba'ir, baruch atah basadeh. Unetancha Hashem l'rosh v'lo l'zanav. V'hilvita goyim rabim v'atalo til there. You will have uh, economic blessing. You'll have uh, physical blessings. You'll have family blessings. What about the world to come? Well, read. Read, read chapter uh, 28. Read chapter 28. A very long, long, look at page. A whole long list here of all the pages 
pages. Very long chapter, chapter 28 of Deuteronomy. All of the different kinds of occurrences that will take place if the Jewish people violate uh, the Jewish law. And they're all dealing with punishments in this world. Various forms of ailment. Various forms of, uh, of difficulties with, with a person's possessions, in a person's field, in a person's, in a person's pursuits, in a person's, in a person's family. Why? Why? Why is it so hidden? Why is there no mention of Olam Haba in the Torah? Now, I, I would like to say before we discuss this, that it is clear that this is a central idea in Torah thought, uh, that if one carefully studies uh, the Torah, if one carefully studies the scriptures, one will surely conclude that even in the scriptures itself, one can sense something beyond this world. I don't think that that's too difficult to prove. Uh, you know, Abraham was told by God, for instance, you will join with your fathers in peace. Join with his fathers in peace. Abraham, Abraham passed away in the land of Israel. Abraham was buried in, in uh, Hebron, in uh, Marat HaMachmelah, in, uh, in the tomb of the patriarch. His father, it says explicitly in the Torah, died in Haran, nowhere near Israel. You will be joining your fathers? In what sense is he joining his fathers? Uh, Aaron, it says in the, in the book of Numbers, Ye'asef Aharon El Amav. Aharon ascends a certain kind of mountain, and it says he'll be gathered to his people. Which people is he being gathered to on a, on a mountain that no one else is buried at? Which people? What people? You'll be gathered to your nation. And the many references in the Torah of, uh, if you remember, Bilam. Remember the sorcerer Bilam? Remember he was some form of, uh, I don't know, uh, soothsayer, or maybe quasi-prophet? Remember Bilam? He prays that he should have the following. Tamot nafshi mot yisharim. I wish I could die the death of the righteous. He's talking about the Jewish people. The Jewish people, the righteous. Utihi achariti kamohu. And my end, my after exists. Achariti. He mentions death. And then he says, achariti. And may that which happens afterwards to me, may it be like theirs. What is he talking about, Achariti? What happens afterwards? Which, 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 which happening is he talking about? In terms of something happening beyond his death. The Torah speaks in, in Parashat Ta'azinu. At the end of Deuteronomy, we read it also a similar, a similar notion in the famous song of, uh, of Chana. I, 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 I will bring the people to, to death and back to life. I bring life. Hashem me mitu there are many references in, in Torah literature. I mean, that the person lives beyond this world. If you want an open section of the Torah, an open section of the Bible that discusses it, I would recommend reading uh, chapter 28 of Samuel 1, one of the most famous stories of how, I'm not saying this was a proper action, but there's an entire description there. Surely that's the simple reading of the text. Uh, although maybe... The, Someone could argue that there's a different way of reading it. That's, that's what it says. Remember when Saul, remember when King Saul was so troubled and he didn't know what to do? He was at wit's end because of the problems that he was having with the enemies of the Jewish people? And he somehow contacts the, um, the soul of the deceased Samuel. Shmuel, it's a, just read it. It's all in the text. This is, not, this is not Midrashic literature. This is a textual reference. So I don't doubt the fact that if one studies carefully, uh, one will see mentions to afterlife in the Torah. I'm just curious as to why. why. Why no mention of reward and punishment in the world beyond? Now you could say, if you want, you could say, well, maybe the references, there are many references in the Torah about a soul being cut off. Remember that? Karet. V'nechrita hanefesh ahi. The soul will be cut off. Well, maybe the soul being cut off is something, not just the soul being cut off in the sense that the person will die. Maybe the soul will be cut off, that, that there's some kind of, of a punishment beyond this world, in the world of the soul. Or, you know, he karet, ti karet hanefeshahi. Perhaps. But in Parashat Bechukotai, Parashat Kitavo, and many other places, there is no such reference. This question is raised by the greatest of authorities, 
Amongst them, uh, the Avar Benel, in his uh, famous work, Tzedek Olamim, dedicates a major section to the study of this question. Lama you you Torah kulam dvarim kashmiim why such a, a heavy emphasis on, on this world, on the physical world, on the material blessing? Rav Yitzchak Arma'a, in his sefer called Akedat Yitzchak, very famous work, also discusses it. Um, Rav Yosef Albo, in his work called Sefer Ha'ikarim, famous, one of the famous uh, Jewish philosophers, he discusses it. Adi Ibn Ezra in one place, in his commentary on Deuteronomy 32, Rabbi Avraham Ibn Ezra suggests, well, maybe God wanted to write the Torah in a way that will be understood by all of the masses. And maybe concepts which are so esoteric, you know, concepts of worlds beyond, of existences beyond this existence, uh, in the language of the Ibn Ezra, I'll, I'll read it, this is from the Ibn Ezra's commentary, Tvarim Lamed Bet Lamed Tet, he, he writes as follows, Suggest the Ibn Ezra, maybe the concept is beyond. The Torah has to be a book that can be read by everyone. And therefore, since it has to be a book that's easily readable and understandable to all levels, so God doesn't include uh, concepts which are, which are so, so profound. Some say, no, God wanted to build into the system a certain level of dependency on an oral tradition. So physically uh, discussed ideas are in the written book, and then there's something beyond in the oral tradition. But there's a, an approach of the Chafetz Chaim, which I saw quoted in Rabbi Monk's uh, writings in the book called The Call of the Torah, which I'd like to read and share with you. Uh, Rabbi Monk quotes the Chafetz Chaim as saying as follows. The reason why the Torah emphasizes rewards and punishments in this world, Chafetz Chaim writes that if the material rewards had not been promised, so people may get so carried away with the world to come that they will neglect this world. They will view this world as totally insignificant. Many people might think of completely devoting themselves to life in the world to come. What's the difference? It rains, it doesn't rain. I have possessions, I don't have possessions. I work the field, the field is successful. The animals are uh, children, family, it's all nothing. This world doesn't count. There's only the world to come. Says the Chafetz Chaim, many people might think of completely devoting themselves to life in the world to come and thereby remove themselves from the affairs of this world. To discourage such extremes, the Torah focused on the material blessings that man might expect in this world. Uh, one of the great teachings of Torah is that although we surely strive towards great levels in the world to come, we do not negate the importance and significance of this world, of this physical world. According to this reading in Chafetz Chaim, suggests Rabbi Monk, the fact that in Parashat Bechukotai, the fact that in Parashat Kitavo, the fact that in so many places of Torah, it's this world, the rewards in this world, the punishments in, in this world that are being spoken of, that's there to tell you that this world too has special place and significance and don't, don't overlook the significance of this world. Don't just get carried away with, with concepts of the world beyond. You have to be a mensch. You have to act properly. You have to live up to your responsibilities in this world. And the attitudes and the happenings in this world are significant. They are significant. How do I know they're significant? Open up the Torah. This is the most significant work in the, in the, in the world. And the Torah spends so much time speaking about matters in this world. Since the Torah emphasizes the, the uh, material blessings and, God forbid, the curses, the material, physical, physical curses in this world, that can help open our eyes to understanding a greater level of this world as well. We hope that we can appreciate, of course, the, the levels beyond this world. And we do hope that each of us, as we study Parshat Bechukotai, uh, regains 
a greater level of dedication to living properly, not only in the world to come, but in this world as well. Thank you. A question. Okay, thank you. A question. I, can, I should read this? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Is it possible that you have a relative from Poland named Rita Machlis? I'm just researching loose ends. That was the name of my father's mother. And I've never heard it before learning about you. They came to America in the early 40s. Thank you in advance for taking time for your busy schedule to respond. Ruthie, I, I, I have no, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know, but uh, I guess we're all related. Right? I, mean, uh, I don't know if this is the same machlas or a different machlas. I don't know how, how, how significant it is. I hope that uh, Ruthie, uh, daughter of, uh, a daughter of, uh, a granddaughter of Rita Machlas, should be blessed uh, together with all, all the other people. And I, I, do, I do see a significance in, in getting closer to family members. That's what I was just talking about. That family does count, that this world does count. But I have no idea who Rita Machlis is. I would love uh, more information if Ruti can provide it. And uh, Ruti, together with your whole family, why don't you come visit us uh, in uh, Eretz Yisrael? We can discuss family matters in person. Shalom. Thank you so much for listening.